All right, today in the 2009 Toyota Camry, we're gonna install part number 118405 from Tilready. This is a T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector. Okay, first thing we need to do is get our vehicle ready to install the wiring harness. To do that, we need to open up a trunk. Next, we need to get access to our wiring. Okay, now to get access to our wiring, we have to remove the floor covering, the threshold, and loosen up this panel here to get access to our connection points. So floor coverings need to go down to the spare tire. We can take this and actually scoot it forward. it will be okay. Now we need to remove our threshold. To remove our threshold, it looks like there's a tie down point on each side that we have to remove. Now to remove our tie down, we're using an eight millimeter socket. We'll take the bottom edge of our threshold and pull it out. Make sure it's all loosened up. There should be some fasteners going all across the bottom. There should be one about right here. Once you have it loosened up, you can pull straight up from the bottom and it should release. Now I have to remove this tray as well. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket to remove that bolt and this should lift straight out. Now we need to get some access behind here. So we'll also go ahead and remove this rivet here. And we can pull this completely out of our way. Now on our driver's side, we have full access to our wiring. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over on the passenger side. Now we can go ahead and start working with our T-connector. We're starting off on the driver's side, we'll go ahead and install our wire harness for a left turn signal. Now we'll be using a T-connector to yellow wire. Now these connection points are unique, so you can't really put it in the wrong spot. But to help you find the right spot, we'll go ahead and turn on the turn signal, and you look from behind, you can see which one is flashing and know where to put it. So the light tells us which socket it is. So we'll go ahead and push down a small tab right here, and pull out the connection point. And this will go in between the two connection points, like a T. Now our next T-connector has a brown and red wires. The brown wire is for a running light circuit. So we can identify that by turning on the running light circuit and looking for the light behind that socket. Same thing as before, push down the tab and release it. And we'll go ahead and put this in the middle. All right, next we'll go ahead and work for white wire with the ring terminal. This is our ground. We'll actually connect it to the factory ground located right here. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket to take it apart and put this with it. Now we'll go ahead and work for a T-connector with a green wire over on our passenger side. We'll go ahead and look for the socket that's flashing with the turn signal. We'll go ahead and take it apart, just like we did on the driver's side. All right, next we'll go ahead and mount our module here. Uh, you can use a sheet metal screw attached to the sheet metal here, or in this case, I think we have enough room, we can just tuck it beneath the wire harness and we'll zip tie it right here. Now our threshold will push up against this and hold it in place as well to keep it from moving around. We'll go ahead and work with our red wire for our module. We need to connect that up to a 12 volt power supply in the engine compartment. To do that, we'll take the black wire that comes with the kit and connect the two together. We'll be using a buck connector that comes with the kit to make our connection. Now we need to run our wire to the outside. To do that, we'll go through a grommet that's located right here on this edge. We'll make a slit in here and pass our wire through. Okay, let's go ahead and run our wire through the grommet. 
and we'll take up all our excess through it, at least most of it. Okay, let's go ahead and take our wire, put it through the hole, and reinstall the grommet. We'll pull back what we need so we can hide it behind all the panels. Okay, now we'll go ahead and take our black wire and run it up to, to the engine compartment. Now when we do that, we'll stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. Okay, this is our wire harness coming out of our grommet and we use the wire loom to help hold it in place right here. Part number A0250. Then we went over a fuel line, then we went over the rear suspension, we zip tied in places that we could, come down along the fuel tank and then zip tied to the parking brake cable. Then we follow along the lines going up towards the engine compartment. And from here, we'll use, a, we'll use a wire pull to help pull this wire from the bottom to the top. Now the wire pull could be any stiff piece of wire that holds its shape. So you can pull it from the bottom towards the top. In this case, we're using a piece of airline tubing. Now we'll take our wire pull and we'll go ahead and work it down till we get down to the bottom of the engine compartment. And we do one double check to make sure we stay away from anything moving like steering components. And once we have our wire pull ran to the ground, we'll go ahead and attach our 12 volt wire to it. And then we'll go ahead and pull it back up towards the top. All right, now with our wire connected, we'll go ahead and pull it back up towards the top. Double check to make sure you have all your slack pulled out. And then we'll go ahead and zip tie it to our wire harness right here to help hold it up and out of the way. Okay, we'll go ahead and route our wire over to our battery, and we'll go ahead and zip tie along the factory wire harness. All right, we'll go ahead and cut off the tails to our zip ties. We'll go ahead and route to the positive side of our battery and cut it to length. Okay, let's go ahead and add our fuse holder. First, we'll go ahead and cut it in half, then add a ring terminal to one end and a buck connector to the other end. Now we'll go ahead and loosen up this nut here and add a ring terminal to it. Okay, we'll use a 12 millimeter socket to loosen it up. Put the ring terminal on and reattach the nut. Now we can go ahead and add a fuse to the fuse holder Put the cover on, and we'll just tuck that behind the battery. Okay, now we have everything electrically connected. Now will be a good idea to go ahead and try it out before we put everything back together. We'll use our tester and we'll clamp it to the white wire. Then we'll test our brown wire for running light circuit. Okay. And then yellow for left turn. And green for right turn. And then we'll have a brake signal will be constant on the yellow and green. Cool, looks like everything works. So let's go ahead and put everything back together. We'll go ahead and take a moment to zip tie our wires along the factory wire harness. And we can go ahead and put the rest of the components back in. Now that I have all our components reinstalled, we'll go ahead and show you how to use it. Now the reason to keep it inside the trunk is that the elements won't get a hold of the contacts and corrode over time. So let's keep them inside the vehicle. When we do need to use it, we'll go ahead and pull it out and shut the hash on it. The door seal's thick enough where it won't hurt the wire when you close the door on it. Just don't do it here. So that'll mash the wire you have to start all over. So we'll pull out a little bit and then run out what you need down to your trailer. 
Okay, with that, that'll finish it for our install, part number 118405. The T1 vehicle wiring harness with the four-pole flat trailer connector on our 2009 Toyota Camry.